Good evening, I'm, my name is Scott McElmey. I'm my happy the great and I'm probably in honor of introducing a segment which is not on our program. Um, we have in the audience tonight obviously people from all parts of the world. We have writers and editors and publishers and agents and publicists and so on. Um, and putting together the following remarks, however, I've, I've had in mind a much smaller group of people. Uh, my brothers and sisters in the NDCC and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Sue Leonard and, and uh, uh, their children, who I, I hope are in the audience. Not long after John Leonard died, I found one of his collections of reviews and essays in the secondhand bookshop. It was the only uh, book of that sort that I didn't have, so there's really no question of whether to, to get it or not. Um, only later did I notice that the previous owner had, shall we say, interacted with John's prose with pen in hand, with a red pen in hand, actually, uh, though not in the sense of the expression red pen usually conveys. She, for some reason, the script made me imagine a young woman, a uh, press in her early 20s, was quite enthusiastic, underlining sentences and phrases with a certain vigor, and responding to funny passages with, perfectly enough, ha ha. <laughs> As, book, uh, as a book buyer, I was not delighted. <laughs> but at two or three points, this previous owner inscribed something in the margin that, in spite of everything, made me forgive her. Awesome, she wrote, with an exclamation point. Or just awesome. No one dollars from this. <laughs> yes, that's it. The emojis for damn sure. John Leonard was awesome. He was one of the founders of the National Book Critics Circle back in 1974. He was a friend of many of its members. And this cannot be proved, but neither can I doubt it for a second. The most alert and generous reader any of us in the NBCC have ever had. And even if you are an NBCC member who never met John, you should take it as a given that he was paying attention to your work, or at least he would have wanted to do so. The man's appetite for print was enormous. You see it reflected in his major contribution to the book review as literary genre, the critical arpeggio, the normal bebop of flatted cultural cross-references and augmented mystic chords of memory. And John's appetite seemed inextingu uh, inextinguishable. Even while worn down by chemotherapy, he would sit there enthusing about some book he had just started reading in galleries and making connections between it and something he recalled he'd written and reviewed five years earlier and you had probably forgotten yourself. It was astounding. It was humbling. It was awesome. Imagine getting paid each day to sit around reading books, he wrote in an essay 35 years ago, and then having a column all your own to tell everybody what you think about those books. Even a pessimist would enjoy it, provided he likes to read and write. <laughs> it's one of the few pleasures one thinks of sex. They can't be taxed, although the Internal Revenue Service had been making noises about all those free books over the overseas. Perhaps we should pay our taxes in the form of first novels and let the Treasury Department sell them to the Strand Bookstore. <laughs> in honor of John, how about we all try that next month? For now, though, let me quote one more thing from another essay that seems very appropriate to today and to this occasion. An author's work, work, wrote John, is, quote, experienced by the reader as a competing solitude. It's not communal. It's intimacy to intimacy, one-on-one, -on -one, down there with the demons. Similar solitudes also write book reviews, variously wet with, from their own emotional weathers. The reviewers sit in separate splendid singularities on prize-giving panels, groping for a group mind. More often than not, the ultimate winner is everybody's second best, agreed upon in order to sacrifice the least of each panelist in battle of self-esteem. This is very much like democracy, except with more parties and livelier primaries and a love of language. From such a democracy, I seek counsel and courage." End quote. On behalf of the assembled separate splendid singularities of the National Book Critics Circle, let me express in Don Leonard's family our deep gratitude for the contributions made to this organization. We miss the counsel and courage you lent us. The parties and primaries hereabouts will never be the same without them.
two years ago, he made the marks that stayed with me, that expressed the mission of this group from its beginnings to the present. He said, my whole life I've been waving the names of writers as if we needed rescue. From these writers for almost 50 years I have received narrative, witness, companionship, sanctuary, shock, and steely strangeness. Good advice, bad news, and amazing grace. At an average of five books a week, not counting all those sighed at and nibbled on before they go to this strand, I will read 13,000, then I'm dead. 13,000 in a lifetime, about as many as there are new ones published every month in this country. It's not enough and yet rich in excess. The books we love, love us back. In gratitude, we should promise, he wrote, not to cheat, he said, not to cheat on them, not to pretend we're better than they are, not to use them as target practice, agitprop, trampolines, photo ops, or stocking horses, nor to sell out scruple to that scratch and sniff infotainment racket in which we posture in front of experience instead of engaging it, and fidget in our cynical opportunism for an angle, a spin, or a take, instead of consulting compass points of principle and attitudes like matches to admire our wise guy profiles in the mirrors of the slicks. We are reading for our lives, not performing like seals for some fresh fish. So, we love the books we love, love us back. We are passionate about books. We have honored just a handful of some of the best books written over the last 35 years that this organization has existed. There are more to come. Please join us at the reception to celebrate them all. And remember, the books we love, love us back.